lesson for this day is found in the book of Mark, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on the Sabbath day, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as he made their way, the disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath day? And Jesus said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the high priest to eat. And then he gave some to his companions. So he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Oh Christ, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do ask your blessing upon us this day as we hear your word. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So today is all about laws and legalities. And if you listened to last week's Sunday at Holy Trinity, we saw how Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and was trying to take a gift of God's love and turn it into a work. Right? This is what Pharisees do, and we are quite pharisaical, us Christians, don't we? We take a gift that somebody has given to us, and we want to know what we've done to earn it or deserve it in order to manipulate and control people. That's religiosity, those are legalisms. And legalisms and religiosity kill people when we, at least spiritually, when they become so important more important than the actual faith which they are trying to communicate. And they can literally kill people because people pick up arms and guns to murder people who don't follow what they think is God's will. So Jesus just kind of makes this whole system of legalities crash, come, pulls a rug out from under it, neither it, and it just comes crashing down as he talks about the Sabbath day. So let's first of all start about what the Sabbath day is. Alright? It is from the third commandment that Moses was given by God to pass on to the people of Israel. Just ten simple little commandments. They were just guidelines, kind of, to guide them into their new life, into the promised land, knowing that these are not sufficient. They don't actually express the entirety of one's relationship with God, and they fall short in some way. Jesus demonstrates that later too, right? Thou shalt not kill. Well, that's easy. I'm killing anybody. Well, even hating somebody is killing Jesus. Said, what? So he has a way of doing that. But let's take a look at the Sabbath day. The commandment is both a positive commandment and a negative commandment, okay? It is first a po one of the first positive commandments. It tells us what to do. It is the last of the first tablet of commandments, at least the way we Lutherans organize it, those commandments related to God. Okay? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It's not like thou shalt not kill. It's something positive. Remember it. Honor it. Keep it sacred. Keep it holy. Where does this whole uh, concept of Sabbath day come from? That goes all the way back to the beginning of Genesis. God created the universe, or actually ordered the universe. It never says that God created the materials of the universe. If you read it closely, I'm sure that God did. But what it does say is God created the chaos that existed in the universe and ordered it into the structure we now call this world and this planet and this universe, okay? With a simple word. Let there be light. The chaos of the universe obeyed God's command. So it also expresses to us the importance of that Sabbath day. So in Genesis chapter 1, a Sabbath, it's a, it, Genesis 1 is all about the Sabbath day. It's a Sabbath day, what we call Sabbath day cosmology. The study of the beginning or the origin of the Sabbath day. That's the real purpose of Genesis 1. I think when we, we get off track when we think it's about the origins of the materialistic universe, it has nothing to do with the materialistic universe. It has to do with our relationship with God and how it's expressed in that day in which we rest, the Sabbath day. The seventh day is the crowning accomplishment of God's creation. Not humanity, by the way. We humans point to creation of humans. Well, there you go. God created humans, and therefore, ah, that was the crowning accomplishment of creation. No, it wasn't. 
The seventh day, the Sabbath day, was the crowning accomplishment of creation when God sits in his holy temple and comes to rest, dwelling amongst the people whom he created in the creation that he made. That's the crowning accomplishment because that's God's purpose and will for us to live with each other, to care for God's planet, to rest in God's presence. This is completely different than every other cosmology that existed at the time of the Bible. Like, I don't know, like the, uh, uh, the story about Marduk, the Mesopotamian mythologies, the Canaanite mythologies on the seventh day, uh, 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 and, the Can and the Canaanite mythologies. Um, uh, there was a place that was set aside for their god, Baal, in which he could rest away from the creation and his people. The God of the Bible rests amongst his people in this plane of existence. He wants to dwell amongst us. It's unlike all the other gods of the universe. This is what Genesis 1 is trying to tell us. So that's why the Sabbath day is important. It is the day we acknowledge God's presence. We sit with God and acknowledge the wondrous creation he has made. And we are at peace with him and with one another. So what does this mean? So the Jews then were told to continue. This is a weekly celebration of sitting in the presence of God and dwelling amongst one another. Honoring the Sabbath day, therefore, means using it as a day for gratitude. Gratitude that God lives with us. Gratitude that God has given us life. That's the purpose of the Sabbath day. You know, I just remember a story, true story, a few years ago. My mom is kind of, uh, you know, she's thinking about life and death and her relationship with us. And she's thinking, maybe I haven't done everything perfectly and well. And she came to, I, it's what I called her apology tour. She went to all three of us brothers. And, you know, I'm sorry for the things that I did wrong and this and that. You know, we parents all do things wrong, right? And so in one sense, there's, sure, I'm grateful for that. But I looked at her and said, Mom, listen, I appreciate this, but you gave me life. So whatever else you did between there and now it might not have all been perfect, I will always be indebted to you for that. And I am grateful. That's the purpose of the Sabbath day. I am always indebted to God, and I will never pay that back. So I just sit here on the Sabbath day, and I say, thank you to God for your gifts. It is an opportunity to say thank you and respond with acts of charity and kindness for others. So God, we are told, created the Sabbath day for us. It's his way of regenerating us. The problem is, is that this beautiful day that God made for us became a legalistic obligation. The Jews started putting what they called hedges around the law. Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Acknowledge it as a day where we take, use it as a day to acknowledge God's presence in our lives. That, let God, that He lives with us and that He loves us and so we're grateful for it. Now we've turned it into an obligation. So they create hedges around hedges around hedges. It reminds me of a, a joke I heard. I've got to read this because I can't tell it as well as I can read it. Uh, there, was, there were two Jewish men named Mo and Lenny. They're strolling from home one Sunday on the Sabbath day, which is a Saturday for them. Suddenly a cab speeds by, and guess what? Their friend is in the cab. His name is Irving. Or actually, he's not in the cab. He's running after the cab. He's running frantically after the cab. Flailing his arms. We're like, oh my goodness. That's a work, by the way. He's running. And he's flailing after the, uh, the cab. He's running after it. Well, the friend Lenny said, I never imagined our good friend Irving was a Sabbath day violator. You're not allowed to run on the Sabbath day. Look at him running after that taxi. Well, Mo said, maybe, just maybe. He's sick and he needs to go to the hospital. Lenny said, come on! He was running 60 miles per hour after that cab. He's healthier than Arnold Schwarzenbomber. 
or Heiser, or whatever. I know, it's Schwarzenegger. Well, Mo said maybe his wife is having a baby. She just had one last week, Lenny said. Well, Mo said, maybe he needs to visit her in the hospital. She's been home for three days, Lenny said. Well, maybe he's running to the hospital to get the doctor. He is a doctor! Okay, well, maybe he needs to go to the hospital to get some supplies for his wife. The hospital is a three minute walk from his, in the opposite direction, by the way. Well, Mo said, maybe our friend Irving has forgotten that it's the Sabbath day. Oh, of course, Lenny said. He knows it's the Sabbath day. Didn't you see the tie that he was wearing? It was a paisley beige 100% Giovanni tie from Italy. He never wears that during the week. He only wears it on the Sabbath day. Whew, Mo said. You're really observant. I didn't even notice he was wearing a tie. <laughs> to which Lenny replied, How could you not notice this tie? Didn't you see he was caught in the back fender of the taxi? Okay. Glad I didn't have to tell it by memory. Lenny and Mo were sitting and talking about the barriers and boundaries that Jews often put around the legalisms they put around the Sabbath day so they don't disobey it. And in so doing, we miss the purpose and the spirit of the Sabbath day. This day is meant to be a blessing that God gives us because we need one day to rest and rejuvenate and regenerate ourselves. Hence the reason why Jesus said to the Pharisees in today's lesson, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So let's talk about the Sabbath. What does this mean for us today? First thing we start with is Sunday, the Sabbath day, and the answer to that simply is not technically, no. Saturday is the Sabbath day in the Bible. Oh, well, so the seventh day Adventists are right, and we are not worshiping on the right day. See, again, the seventh day Adventists are Pharisees. They're putting, okay, a hedge around the law. They're saying, if you're not worshiping on Saturday, you're not worshiping on the biblical day. Well, they're technically correct. But remember, Paul says that God does not, it, that, or Paul says that we're not to, uh, disrespect people for the day in which they honor and which they celebrate. Early non-Jewish Christians actually started worshiping on Sunday. We know this in the very first century. We see this in the Bible, actually, because it's an acknowledgement of the day of resurrection. So Christians started worshiping on Sunday out of thankfulness for the resurrection. I don't think that's a bad thing. The legalists do, who say you have to worship on Saturday, because that's what the Bible says. That's not what the Bible says. We take a day and acknowledge it as the day of Sabbath and rest. The day in which we acknowledge the life that we've received from God. What better day to worship than Sunday? Because of the new life we have in Jesus Christ. Which day we set aside for rest and gratitude is not of importance. Listen to what Paul says. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat and drink, or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. He doesn't care which day you worship on. This is Paul, by the way, all right? Not Joe Schmo down the street, not even Pastor Dave. These are shadows of the things that were to come, the reality. However, it is found in Christ. So as long as we take a day, we acknowledge this is the day of new life that we have. So now, what do we do with the Sabbath day? I mean, Sunday has now just become a day like every other day. People work on it. I will tell you what, people are playing games on it. Football's played on it. We get kids going down to the park. They're playing their soccer. Uh, even the Roman Catholic track and field leagues, as we've been told by some of the members who've come from that tradition, say, yeah, you know, in track and field, they have track meets on Sunday. The Catholic Church is track meets on Sunday. It's just hard to imagine. But we live in a very secular world, don't we? 
that no longer values a day of rest. And so it's really hard for us. So this has significant consequences on me and on you and on your family and how we worship and what we do. What do you do when your job requires you to work on Sunday? This has significant negative consequences on my family, my life, my physical health, my social stability. We live in a very ungrateful society that no longer takes a moment, a day, to set aside to acknowledge the gift of God's love. In fact, I will tell you, look at the box in your hand up for today. The animus that we have towards one another is a direct result of our lack of gratitude. But the church is one of the few institutions whose primary purpose is, is to teach gratitude. This is what Sabbath day is all about. But since we've neglected the Sabbath, foregoing a day that's set aside for rest and gratitude, it is not surprising that we have a lack of love and tolerance for one another. So what can we do in a secular society that no longer allows us to set aside a day? There's always something competing for our time. What we do need to do is set aside at least one day to cease from the daily busyness of our lives. Set aside at least two hours per week to gather with other Christians to give thanks to God for the life that we have. Maybe it's on a Sunday. Maybe it's on Tuesday as we have here. Maybe it's on a Saturday. I don't know what your work schedules are like, but please find a time in which you and your church faith community Set aside that time to worship God. It may not be the same day as you set aside to cease from the daily busyness of your life. But this I can tell you, worship is not a private thing that I do in the, uh, at the beach or in the forest by myself, me and Jesus. It's a communal activity. So you need to set aside a time for personal rest and also worship with others. Whether it's on the same day or not in this world, in this community, is a tough thing to do. But we need to set a sign for gratitude, because gratitude is a communal activity with communal, activ uh, communal implications. How do we best love each other? That's why we gather together as the church. Because ultimately, the Christian life is about Jesus and us. Us, not Jesus and me. So I know, Sabbath day is a very hard thing. Believe it or not, it was just as hard back in the first century A.D. The early church was struggling with this too. Because the secular world, the Roman world, was asking demands of them that they worship on day, or that they work on days that they had normally set aside for worship. The Jews were scorned for setting aside Saturday for worship. Romans often would set aside Friday. Some cultures set aside Monday. The early Christians started setting aside Sunday, but Sunday was a normal day of work, so they would gather together early for worship. And then they'd go about their business and go to work. So the early Christians did work on Sundays, believe it or not. They went early, like 5 a.m., to, to worship. And then go to work at 7. And then they come back late in the night and eat a potluck supper together. And then they would take a day where they could to rest and recuperate with their families. So, this is not a new problem, okay? But let's not set hedges around it, but let's keep the spirit of the Sabbath day. Find time to worship with your brothers and sisters so we acknowledge the communion of Christ and how we're all centered on our thanksgiving for the gift of life that God has given us and set aside some time where you just stop participating in the busyness of your weekly activities. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the Sabbath day. Uh, it's a Sunday for us. It's when we're acknowledging that. Forgive us when we make a law of this. God, the secular society puts a lot of pressure on us and makes it very difficult. But help us to find a way, number one, to set aside some time to worship with our brothers and sisters and give thanks for the life that we have and also to stop the chaos and the busyness of our weekly lives just to rest and recuperate because you've made this day for us. 
We give you thanks for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing together, When Morning Gilts the Skies. Uh, that's actually for those in the worship this morning. That's actually following the sermon here. It's on this DVD. So you're welcome to continue to listen to it. Turn to hymn number 853. If you're watching on YouTube, well, we're going to publish the words of this song so that you can sing it on our Facebook account or you can look it up in the hymn book yourself. But let us sing together our hymn. When morning gilds the skies. <laughs> 